I'm Greg Pauly, and I'm the curator of herpetology at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles. The yellow-bellied sea snake is, is actually the widest ranging snake species in the world. So they're found all throughout the Indian and the Pacific Ocean. So they go from the east coast of Africa all the way to the west coast of the Americas, but they're normally in much more tropical waters. And um, it turns out, though, that in El Nino years, sometimes these snakes will follow the warm waters north. And so, but from the tip of Baja up to this region, which is about a thousand miles, we only have five documented records of this snake ever being found on the Pacific coast. So they're in the Sea of Cortez, but they don't come around the tip of Baja and come north. This snake right here uh, was found, um, the Surf Rider Foundation had a beach cleanup at Bolsa Chica State Beach, and this snake was found by a volunteer. They had 270 volunteers out, they picked up over 300 pounds of trash, and they also happened to find a sea snake. It's the third record for the state of California and only the fifth record um, for the Pacific Coast north of the tip of Baja. And you can see why they get the name yellow bellied. So they have this you know, really spectacular yellow belly. And so you can imagine if you're a fish and you're looking up and the snake's cruising by, it's going to be hard to see because you're going to have this yellow belly against that sunlit sky. And if you're, say, an aerial predator like a bird and you're looking down, you're going to have that dark ocean surface and then you're just going to be able to see this dark body form. So it's going to be hard to see. So it's really actually, I mean, it's the striking animal when you look from the side, but from above or below, a predator would actually have a hard time seeing it. If you look at a snake normally, and that snake is going to have these big snail, these big scales all across its belly. Mm -hmm. So a big scale all the way across the belly, which makes sense. You're on land. What keeps you from, what gives you traction? You need that trip. Well, those scales projecting down into the ground is what gives you traction. Well, what, these guys just, look, they're just a modified fin. I mean, this is an animal that's just, all of its body is sort of in a single plane because it's just, it's just meant to be swimming around. It's just a fin. So when these guys end up on land, they don't have anything that sort of gives them traction against the sand. They can barely move. So they're basically dependent upon another wave pulling them back out into the ocean. So because these guys can barely move on land, they're not able to strike very well on land. In the water, it's very different because you've got this substrate around you. You've got this water, and you can quickly you know, move through that water. So in the water, they're going to be able to strike at rapidly moving fish very effectively. But on land, I mean, these are... So this is a highly venomous species. Um, the sea snakes are actually fairly closely related to things like cobras and, and crates and their relatives. Um, but their mouths are really small. They're cruising around the oceans eating little small fish. So they're not like a rattlesnake that has a really big gape. Their mouths just open up a little bit because that's all you need to do to ingest a fish. So they do have these fangs, but they're really small fangs. And so the chance of somebody being bit is incredibly low. And the way that people normally get bit is it's fishermen being careless, pulling these snakes out of their nets. And they're using their hands and then there's something small that the snake can grab onto, and in some cases they do get people do get envenomated. That being said, again, most wide-ranging snake in the world comes into contact with people who are out fishing. There's not a single case of a human fatality.